Good morning, everybody. Hey, welcome to the last week of November and the week of Thanksgiving. Just for that, I want to say thank you for joining us today. I hope you've got something to be thankful about as we head into uh, this last week of November and Thanksgiving week. So, hey, Dave will be with us. I'm, I'm glad to be back in the chair again to, uh, to bring you some information and to chat with Dave about what's happening uh, here and in the markets. And so, uh, Dave will be with us here in just a few minutes. Oh, 5.7 Light FM Morning All. It's 8.39 here, 21 before 9. Let's see what went on over the weekend and what's likely to happen today to your retirement funds, your IRA, your 401K. And as I've said, everything you don't have stuffed in an old sweat sock gets affected by this, and you can make a point the sweat sock gets affected as well. Let's go downtown and see how our short trading week is starting out with Philip Statler from Statler Financial Services in downtown Sebring. Philip, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Dave. Hey, welcome to the last week of November. It's hard to believe that when we talk again next week, it will be December. Oh, Lord. Well, at least we'll have some macro stuff to talk about from the government. But, boy, is this month gone fast. Uh, word is, just, you know, as we get into the notion of Black Friday and whatnot, I was reading reports over the weekend. We didn't get a chance to talk about this uh, before we went on the air. But the trend for Black Friday and the Christmas shopping season is uh, – Pretty positive they're projecting at least a 4% bump on our spending this year over last year. That's got to feel good for our retail stocks. Yeah, I, I think so. I, mean, I saw the same thing, Dave, and I, I thought that that was kind of interesting that they're expecting that 4% growth at, uh, at Christmas time. And, and, you know, they can say that all they want. It won't really be t tell toll everything until we go back in January and look back and say, okay, how did December really, really come up? Absolutely. And the other thing that needs to be thrown into that equation is last year, uh, especially people that do what you and I do, especially you, you might remember that the stock market was absolutely tanking. We were in the middle of a real big correction during December, and that meant that last December was only like a 2% increase. It was a real big disappointment. So uh, 4 4 4.5% this year, yeah, it'd be a great growth rate, but it is also kind of a recovery from an off year last year. Yeah, that's right. I and mean, you're right. We did have uh, last year this time was the stock market was not doing what it's been doing this quarter. It was doing kind of the opposite. So you're right. Yeah, equi equities were kind of coughing up a hairball last year at this time. And that, that that's generally enough to scare people, even if they aren't planning on using the money, watching your retirement account go. <laughs> it's not exactly a harbinger for a big Christmas shopping binge, is it? No, it's just really not when you see your, your trading account going down, down, down. Absolutely. Speaking of trading accounts, the big news this morning is something I was alluding to while I was soloing at the end of last week. Uh, they said it might move fast, and boy, did it, just not quite as fast as the Dreamers had it. Uh, Charles Schwab is buying TD Ameritrade. Now, that was the big rumor on Thursday and Friday, and it had those two stocks just absolutely skyrocketing. Deal was cut over the weekend. Looks like Schwab is actually buying TD Ameritrade, and they're doing it in an all-stock deal equating to $26 billion. Now comes the review from the shareholders, and the TD Ameritrade shareholders are happy, and the Schwab shareholders are a little less so, I gather. Well, th that's true. The other thing you have to remember, Dave, is that these two companies are huge in terms of the investment advisor world. And so, you know, this is one of those things that's going to have to go through a lot of regulatory approval before the deal gets put to bed altogether. Um, and so, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I looked at, they broke out just the discount brokerage business on one of the tip sheets I had uh, last week. And you put Schwab and TD Ameritrade together, if you isolate out the discount brokerage services, uh, you're looking at pretty dang close to a 50 share of the market. Those guys are really big. They are. You combine those two, and it's going to be a huge deal. And so it's going to be, depend upon how the regulators really look at that. Do they look at just the individual investor standpoint, or do they look at it from the investment advisor world also? You know, that's going to be the thing that they – nobody really knows what part of that they're really going to look at. But you're right. Mm -hmm. They're uh, – you know, the, the TD stock's getting uh, bid up. It's up uh, about two point, well, almost 3% now um, mm -hmm. at uh, getting close to $50 a share. And you're right, Schwab 
on the other side is not so happy. They're down one and a half percent this morning. Um, and it'll be one of those things we have to watch. Nobody has said really when they expect that deal to close because of all the regulatory scrutiny it'll have to go through. Um, but I'm sure we'll hear bits and pieces as, uh, as it progresses. Oh, I suspect so. Eyebrows getting raised at the Justice Department have a tendency to make a lot of noise in the financial press. As, as you say, it depends upon how they look at it. Are they going to look at it as being part of the overall big investment uh, uh, picture? Are they looking at it as being financial advisory? Are they even getting narrower and looking at it as a, a dominant share of the market in the discount brokerage business? Depends upon how they look at it as to how important this is going to be from the standpoint of the Justice Department, isn't it? Yeah, it, it really is. You know, that's that's one of those things. And, and we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it'll get done one way or another. I'm not sure what it'll look like when it's all said and done, but uh, absolutely. I'm sure. So, the other big news out as far as mergers and acquisitions this morning that has everybody excited is, holy crud, Tiffany's selling to the French. Yeah, you know, we talked about that. I don't remember it was last week or the week before last. That was kind of a, a thing that hit the headline. Um, and they're paying a huge premium. Uh, they're paying $16.2 billion or $135 a share for Tiffany's. Um, and that deal is expected to close in mid 2020. So, uh, yeah, so that one's uh, really driving the price of Tiffany's up uh, by a little over five and a half percent this morning at a new 52 week high at $132 and 55 cents right now. I was going to say at 132.55, they've got a little bit more room to grow too, just in order to match that $135 bid the French are offering. But that, that's true. I think some people probably don't want to pay all the way up to that price. You know, you, you, they want to make a profit. <laughs> That'd be true. Yeah, it's kind of interesting looking at it, though, because Tiffany just went absolutely apy on us today. The other bit of business news that's out there, and this gets the funny side of things, uh, unless you're an Uber shareholder. Oops, they got banned in London. Evidently, safety concerns prompted London to uh, pull Uber's license to transport people around one of the uh, two or three biggest cities in the world. Yeah, and they tell me, uh, I saw it's it the second time in two years that they've lost their operating license there. Um, and so that's a big deal for, for Uber. You know, when you think about it, that's a pretty good sized market over there in London. They're trading down 4.5% based on that news. Yeah, and i got to believe the public relations fallout to that happening can't help them one little bit in terms of security in U.S. and other foreign markets as well. Yeah, I, I would think not. I, I would think that that's going to make them come under the, the Microsoft a little bit more in other communities where they're going to look at that stuff. Uh, yep. The other bit of news in terms of stuff, it, in case folks can't tell, we're looking at cleaning up news items and whatnot because trade, <laughs> earnings season pretty darn well close to being done and wiped. eBay announced this morning that uh, they're, they, they want to sell StubHub, the used, uh, what, what do you call it, the used ticket outlet, basically, the unused ticket outlet <laughs> that you can sell. You can, you can scalp your Buccaneers tickets at half price if you want to, because uh, uh, eBay will sell them, but they won't be going through uh, an eBay-owned stub help before too long. No, yeah, they're fixing to sell it off to a company I've never heard of before. Uh, it looks to me like they're getting a pretty good price for it, though, about $4 billion. Um, but I got to think, StubHub has got to be a pretty good profit center for eBay. I mean, uh, that's uh, – I mean, I've used them before to – to offload some of my tickets and so and mm -hmm. buy some tickets so it's it's a pretty uh i would say it probably owns the market share in that area i gotta believe that now the other indication that i've got that it must do well is the fact that you know the the nfl the uh, ticket masters and all of the other ticket brokerage concerns are all racing to be able to put their own online versions on in order to sell unused tickets so there's obviously money to be made there someplace so the other sources wouldn't be doing it well, that's true. You're right. That's that's always an indication right there. Yeah, if, if competition arises, that means there's money to be made. It's always kind of a truism. Uh, you said you had one bit of corporate news at the uh, absolute tail end of earnings season, and boy, was it exciting, huh? Yeah, it's a company called Jacobs Engineering. Uh, they're a big engineering firm. They also do construction, and they manage construction. They also evidently do a lot of um, consulting technology-wise, too. So, uh, they beat uh, by uh, by about uh, 14, 16 cents a share. Uh, revenue beat on forecast as well, um, and they're they're up about three and a half percent. 
The big deal is they're changing their name uh, from Jacobs Engineering to um, Jacobs Solution. A big, big change there, Dave. Yeah, big I'm going to have to change. I'm going to have to change the auto dial on my cell phone for them, aren't I? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but, but it's one of those companies that they, they do probably as much technology consulting as they do the other stuff. So the reason for the name change in it, evidently. Uh, understood. They are right behind Tiffany on my big winners list this morning. So it's obviously good news on their report. Uh, backing up to Friday, the news came out on Friday from the Chinese this time while President Trump was busy live tweeting the impeachment hearings. Uh, the Chinese put out the announcement that, yeah, 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 we're moving along. There's no problem with the trade talks. We're simply moving judiciously to make sure it's a win-win. Everything's perfectly fine. And uh, kind of like it's been with the trade deal, as it goes, whatever gets tweeted or whatever said in an interview is what drives the market. Uh, Friday was up. We had a good day. We ended up up 109 points on the Dow. That's a full third of a percent and a little extra. NASDAQ was up by 1600 up 13%, up $13. And the Standard & Poor's was up by about a quarter of a percent, just under seven points. We kind of backed off from the records, but we're still up in nosebleed territory. 45 minutes before we open this morning, Philip, what do things look like so far today? We're coming up pretty much green. Let me go back to last week just a minute, Dave. Uh, you're mm -hmm. right. They, they did finish up the week in, in, in okay territory, but it was the first time, I think in five weeks, I saw where uh, where it was actually down for the week just a little bit. So. Uh, but uh, but so so some people are starting to put out there. Okay, are we hitting a top? Is this thing giving up some ju juice? Is it going to start to go back the other way? Um, so there there does seem to be some headlines hitting out there just questioning uh, what it's going to look like going forward. But right now, hey, it's all green. Uh, the Dow's up uh, a quarter of a point. The S and P 500 is up a quarter of a point. Nasdaq's up a, a little over three tenths. Um, so everything's looking really good on that side of the of the equation. When we look at commodities, we've got everything going a little bit the other direction. Silver's uh, still up over $17, $17 an ounce, it, but it's down about eight tenths. Gold's down about six tenths. And crude oil is basically flat right now. Uh, it's at $57.72 a barrel. Now, I didn't like the way it was going at the end of the week. I'm happy with flat this morning. Yeah, it was, it was kind of jumping up there a little bit last week. Uh, yeah, it wasn't fun. Everything green on foreign markets. Asia all closed in the uh, green ink area when they closed early this morning. So far, halfway through their trading day, European markets also generally trading upward this morning. Fill up the stability, and you mentioned that uh, with a one-week drop, that tends to make some investors a little nervous, and that indicates uh, needing a little advice to find out how much risk there is in my retirement portfolio. How do I get a hold of you to find that out? You're absolutely right, Dave. Hey, they can give us a call at 863-382-0037. Look, you know, right now, folks, I know that this thing's high. It's time to get a retirement coach that, help, that can help coach you into and through retirement. That's really what we do here at Statler Financial. Give us a call at 382-0037. Check out our website, statlerfinancial.com, and then join us every weekend for the Statler Financial Radio Show, 6 a.m. and noon on Saturdays. 10 a.m. Sunday mornings on News Talk, 7.30 a.m. All righty. And back here tomorrow morning, same time on Light. Philip, thank you so much, and we'll catch you then, all right? All right. You have a great one. Thank you. Be well, my friend. It's 105.7 Light FM and Statler Financial Services. Philip Statler. Of all the questions. Hey, folks, I want to thank you again for joining us today. I hope you got a little, little tidbit out of that today. Uh, Dave and I will be back together tomorrow morning. Enjoy your day. I look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow.